Today we'll be tying the Solares uh, Fly Tying World Tour Fly Tying Contest uh, winning fly. This is the uh, Glow Shrimp. Um, so it is. This is the actual fly that won the contest. Um, it's a very simple fly, actually. Um, it's not real complicated to tie. Uh, it just takes a little bit of uh, patience and practice. Um, we'll be using some UV, uh, some Solar Res UV resin products. Um, so we're going to start everything. We're going to start with a, our hook, and we're going to use a Gamagatsu SP11 311 3H in size 1 knot. Go ahead and put our hook in the vise. I like the one knot hook, it's big enough for most shrimp. Um, the shred, excuse me, the thread we're going to be using is a UTC 140 denier um, in a tan color. I want to start the thread right here at the hook point. Take our tag in um, and stop our thread just a little bit down the bend, about three or four wraps down the end. I'm going to snip our tag end off. I'm going to come back to our starting point of our thread. And then I'm going to come right back down to where we ended, right where we cut our tag off. And we're going to let our thread hang there for just a moment. Um, the material we're going to be using is from Just Add H2O. Um, it's called Deadly Dazzle. It's a misty camel color. So this is the actual material. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is take a, take a little chunk of this. And it's going to be uh, a chunk. It's going to be about... A pencil, a little, little less than a pencil diameter. Um, doesn't have to be a big chunk, but what we want is one that's just a little bit longer than the than the whole length of the entire hook. So just a little bit longer than the length of the hook, and we're going to snip that off. And what we want to do now is kind of stagger these fibers. We don't want a, all these ends to be even. Um, a shrimp's mouth is not even, and that's what we're going to be tying here is a shrimp's mouth. So we just kind of want to stagger everything. Um, Got any really long fibers, you can pull them out and loose fibers. So now we're just going to attach that right at our, our hook point right here, or excuse me, our tie in point. And just a couple little loose pinch wraps right here. And take our material. So we've got this hanging down. Got any excess like I do here, you can just go ahead and snip that off. I'm going to take our thread back to our tie in point again. Okay, and we want to make sure that that. Material is not necessarily in the bottom of the hook. We just want on the top and the sides. We don't want it all the way around. Now we want to take some, uh, just a touch more of that Deadly Dazzle, about the same amount that we just used, so about a quarter of a pencil diameter, not too much. And again, stagger everything. Stagger everything just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take about half of this. We'll use that other half in just a minute. We're just going to place this right on top of the hook. Same point. We're going to end it right about the same place. I like it just a little bit shorter. So a couple of nice little loose wraps. Take our thread back to our tying point just down the bend of the hook so that the mouth of the shrimp is actually pointing down just a little bit. Now, if you got it way down here, that's too far. But you don't want it straight up on top either. You want it just... Let me try to get my thread right here, sorry. want it just down that bend, just a touch where it's kind of just starting to go down. Trim off your excess material. And the next next material we're going to use is a Crystal Flash UV Pearl Color. And we're going to take about uh, 10 to 12 strands. Um, this is kind of up to you. I don't I don't really care how many you use as long as you're not as long as the whole shrimp isn't you know super flashy. Um, shrimp is just supposed to be, have a little bit of flash in it so again we're going to stagger everything just like we did with the deadly dazzle the first material there and stagger these ends so not, they're not perfectly even and tie them on top and sides right remember not directly on top we don't want them going on the bottom we just want a couple of loose wraps right here and i'll take my thumb and kind of work everything around thumb finger just kind of spread those around we don't want a big clump anywhere and then i'm going to take this excess and just fold it over, pull that one out of the way, and fold those over just a little bit. Remember, work around your thumb if you have to. Tie all that UV pearl flash in, take it out, 
I'd like to uh, kind of just see if I've got any loose fibers just by pulling my fingers through there, see if anything comes out. If it does, just toss it out of the way. Uh, our next material is going to be a glow-in-the-dark Flashaboo, uh, the original Flashaboo brand. Um, I'm going to take about four to five strands. We don't want a whole lot of this. Um, I like to use five strands of this, and no particular reason. Um, five just seems to work for me. So I'm going to take just a few and, again, stagger these ends just a little bit. And I'm going to tie these in so that they're about the same length as uh, our flat UV flash that we just tied in. So a couple loose wraps. And make sure that they go around the hook as much as you can. You know, don't nothing on the bottom, but one on the fronts and si tops and sides, rather. I'm going to fold those over just like we did with the UV pearl. Spread around your thumb, pinch them with your fingers if you have to, like I'm doing here. It works really well. And tie those in. Nice tight wraps there. Make sure we got that thing, all that material secured. And you can kind of rotate it, make sure you've got it. Um, if you need to spread them out a little bit, we don't want one big chunk anywhere. So I've got a couple little chunks right there. So I just want to kind of bring that over and then tie it in. There we go. Now we're looking like it's going to be around the hook pretty good. Now we've got that. We're going to take that little bit of um, Deadly Dazzle that we kind of took off that second hunk, and we're just going to attach it right on top here. We're not going to worry about the length. As long as it does not go past the, the uh, farthest length of our original Deadly Dazzle. We're just going to tie that right on top just a little bit. Kind of spread it around. So that is our mouth of our shrimp and what's going to be the head of our shrimp. So that is, that is the mouth, that's the, the horns and things like this, and this is the starting to be the head of our shrimp. And I just kind of blend everything together with my fingers here, kind of rotate it, give it a few tight wraps. Go down to shank of the hook a little bit and come back to your starting point, to right above the barb of the hook. And uh, we're going to put some eyes on this shrimp. And these are eyes I made with solar res resin. Um, these are actually UV thick eyes, uh, excuse me, UV thick resin. Uh, and I just, uh, I don't even melt anything. I just take some resin, put it in a little container. I dip a piece of uh, 30 pound uh, mono in it um, and bring it back up. And it, as it starts to drip down, I'll hit it with the UV light and it forms a nice little ball. Um, and I do that a few times. Uh, for this size, I do that, I dip that about three times and it gets about a large size eye. One size, or one dip gets you about a small and two dips gets you about a medium. But this is three dips in UV resin. Um, and then I just took a UV marker, uh, excuse me, a, a, a Sharpie black marker and just colored in just a tip there, um, just to kind of give it a little bit of a color. So we're going to tie these in. We want to go about... Uh, one and a half distance of the gap of the hook. So I'm going to about one and a half. So I want about right there. And that's about how far I want it off the eye, excuse me, off the uh, the front of the hook there. So I want right about in there. And we're just going to tie that off a couple loose wraps. And I noticed that that dropped. So please do not let it drop on the side. Kind of keep it right on the side of the hook. Do not let it rotate to the bottom like I just did there. We want that on the side of the hook. A few nice tight wraps. And kind of bend it up out of the way if you need to. Take a pair of scissors. I'm going to snip that. I'm going to attach the other eye on the other side. You want these as even as you can, front and back. We don't want we don't want one white one eye way up here, one eye way back there. You want to try to get them as even as you can. Um, I I don't know if it if the fish really care, but um, aesthetically it just looks a whole lot better if the eyes are as even as possible. I like to actually put it back a little bit farther and then drag it forward so that way um, I have something to kind of hold on to and I drag forward it's a little more difficult to drag that backwards but I'm going to tie that in with a few nice tight wraps we're going to snip our excess eye off on that side and I'm just going to do a nice tight wrap in here make sure everything's good kind of taper it down so I've got a nice kind of triangle. So if I rotate this towards you, it's got a nice little triangle. See, it's a wider here and it kind of comes to a point. And that's what we want because what we want to do now is bring our thread back about halfway between where our eyes start to tie in, where our eyes ended up. 
and we want to attach our hackle feather and it's going to be right above or actually just just in front of the hook point so i don't want to i don't want it over here i want it right about there just in front of the hook point just on the the hook bend side of the hook point and we're going to tie in a hackle feather and the hackle feather i'm using is an extra long saddle hackle from china uh, it's nothing real special nothing real fancy um, it's just a it's just a nice little brown colored hackle feather we want one with some rather long fibers on it towards the base. Uh, we want a feather that's going to give us about one and a half times the distance of the gap of the hook. So we want something with some, some substantial um, length feathers on it. And I think this one's probably going to work just fine. Spread these out a little bit. Now nah, it's going to be great right in there. So we're just going to take all this extra feathers out here, kind of mark there where I needed. I'm going to take this and strip the stem a little bit. I'm going to snip this just a little ways. I'm going to prep our feather. I'm going to tie that in on top of the hook or on the side. It, it really doesn't matter um, wherever you're comfortable. Um, I'm just going to tie it in right on top. You can tie it in wherever you wish. I just like it right there. Just a few nice tight wraps. Uh, I'm going to keep the stem right there. I'm going to snip that stem off. Now I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to advance it all the way down towards the eye of the hook, but I'm going to stop about a hook eye's distance away from the hook eye. So I don't want to take it all the way to the end. I want to stop right about in there. So make sure you stop there. And then we're going to cover the base. I'm going to cover that entire base of that hook shank with thread. So we're going to go back down towards the hackle. And then we're going to come back up towards the hook eye again, stopping. So we have just a little bit of hook uh, base exposed there. And now we're going to take and, and palmer our hackle. Uh, around this hook shank so we, now we can create legs of the fly so we're going to take a couple tight wraps right there right next to each other and then we're going to make those wraps fairly tight we don't want them too far apart we want them nice and tight so that when we get done those legs of a shrimp um, you really can't tell where the shorter ones start and the new one and the, and the longer ones are end you know what I'm saying hopefully if I said that correctly so we're just going to come back here. I'm going to capture that tip of that feather right in there, right in there. There we go. So snip your excess feather off. Don't pay attention to that feather. Sorry about that. Uh, snip your feather off as best as you can. I'm going to kind of clean that up just a little bit. There we go. So we got all this nice feather hackle. And now what we're going to do is going to trim this hackle and we're going to trim it so the legs are all the way on the bottom. But we don't want to cut the hackle all the way off. What we want to do is come up just a little bit from the hook shank. So if I cut this about in half, right, a half those hackles off the top and just a little bit off each side, not on the side, just about a 45 degree on each side. I'm not going off. I'm not going straightly off, straight off the side of the hook just to kind of get those long stragglers. So I want a little bit of feather sticking up here, a little bit of that hackle stem, if you will, or uh, a little bit of hackle leftover fibers there. What I want that to do is add, is, is uh, work as a base when we start to um, apply our UV resin. So the UV resin will have something to stick to rather than just a hook shank. So this gives it kind of like a, a backbone, if you will, or a spine or um, uh, like rebar and concrete, right? It makes it stronger. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to do here. Now I'm just going to fold down these legs, trying to get them out of the way. I'm going to use my fingers, rotate them down so they're all sticking down as, about as straight as we can. So we have a nice little angle of uh, feathers there. Take this few wraps right here. And now we're going to take some of our Deadly Dazzle, the same amount that we used on the front end um, for our mouth, same, um, the same diameter. This is going to be... Um, Again, I'm just going to take about the same size clump here, stagger the ends just like we did earlier. Okay, we want this to go just a little bit farther. Remember our our, our head piece, the last piece of deadly dazzle we attached in, ends right there. So we want this piece to go just a little bit farther, just a little bit farther than that piece, and we're just going to tie this in right here at the back. So a couple loose wraps. I just want to keep it right on top of the hook, and I'm going to fold this with my finger just so it spreads over the top of the hook. And what that does, I'm gonna rotate this, is help kind of get a, 
a V. You see how the fan tail of a shrimp is kind of forming there? That's just from kind of rotating that just on half, uh, just on the top half of the hook, and then flattening it out with my thumb and rotating. So we get that nice kind of fan kind of naturally forming so we don't have to worry about cutting it, shaping it too much with our scissors. So that's what we want right there. I'm going to rotate this back up now. A couple of nice tight wraps. And if you have any loose fibers, just run your fingers through, pull them off, and dump them off to the side. Okay. Don't worry about this. We'll, we'll trim this off in a minute. Just leave that hanging off the back end. Um, we're going to take about five of the UV Pearl Flash. And we're again, we're going to stagger those. We don't want them all even. Five or six little pieces here. We want to make sure that that's all. Uh, looks a little more natural so that those little pieces are different lengths. And we're just going to tie that in so it's about the same length as our, excuse me, so it's a little bit longer than the length of the uh, dazzle we just tied in. We're going to kind of rotate that on top of the hook using kind of the same technique we did to make sure that the dazzle is there. Rotate that just a little bit. Go ahead and tie that off and this little excess back here we can just leave. It's not going to hurt anything. We're going to trim that all off in a few minutes anyway. So we just want to make sure that that UV flash is there. Now you can go ahead and take, um, what we're going to do is just add about three strands, three to four strands of that glow in the dark um, flash -a -boo. We don't want to put a whole lot in there. We don't want the whole thing to be uh, glowed right we would just we just want a glow effect and if we put too much glow in there it's just not it's not going to look it's going to look too um i don't know how to say this but cartoonish um we don't really want that we want it to just have a nice glow effect so we want these three strands of that glow and dark flash abu to go about the same length as our uh, uv flash that we just placed on there we want them separated so they're not sitting run one big clump just like we did in the front it's got three strands in there. We're just going to tie that in. Pull it tight. There we go. Okay, so now that's almost all the material. We've got one more material left here. Not a whole lot to this fly, uh, material-wise. Our last material we're really going to use, other than resins, is going to be what we make the antenna and the uh, veins out of. And that is H2O Flash. Uh, from Fly Tires Dungeon, and it is in the black color. It looks like this when it comes in. It's kind of shiny. It's got a nice shimmer to it. And we're just going to take one full strand out of here. I'm going to tie that in right at the halfway point um, of the fiber, not of the not of the fly. I'm going to tie that a halfway in, or roughly halfway in. And that's really hard to catch this on camera because this thing's about 10 inches long. So we're just going to tie that in right there at the base where we have it and what we want to do is spread our fingers so that i'm going to try to turn this a little bit we want to get a v you see how this is kind of spreading right down here in a v these two strands that's what we want because what we want to do is have this black fiber go down the top side or top you know, 30 top third of the side of the hook. And if you tie it, if you tie these straight on top, just like this, without a without kind of Ving them, it's gonna it's gonna be a little more difficult to get it on the side. So if you look, it's gonna kind of like lay naturally right in there, and that's exactly what we want. So now, what we can do is just pull those all those fibers, those black fibers, everything else forward, everything beyond the tail or where the tail is rather. Okay, just kind of separate everything. And we're going to go ahead and whip finish. That's our actual last material. The only thing we have to do now is uh, trim the tail and add some resin. Um, so this is, like I said, it's not a super complicated fly. Um, I'm just actually, I just kind of messed that up a little bit. So I'm going to try to pull that through. And uh, there we go. Kind of twisted everything up there. I apologize for that. There we go. There. So what I want to do is go ahead and trim this tail. I'm just going to trim it about halfway back. I don't really care about the length right now. I'm trying to get it right. I'm just trying to get it so it's not messing up, not messing me up when I'm trying to do this whip finish. So we'll go ahead and whip finish. There we 
we go. Trim your thread. Reposition that just a touch. Now we can trim this tail off and it twisted on me and uh, we everybody has that problem every once in a while I think. And that was kind of my fault. I kind of trapped the thread up underneath there. What we want is that tail to be a nice V shape. So if it's not quite V enough you can try to trim these off to the side a little bit and trim that about two times two to three times the length of the uh, hook eye. So it comes out just a little bit. And now what we want to do is take our black H2O flash and hold it out of the way. I'm going to hold that out of the way using a little mini hair clip um, that I get from the Dollar Tree. They're like a dollar for like, I don't know, 20 of these, 25 of these, something. Clip that. And just hold those two black pieces right out of the way. Now we're going to start our UV resin application. And the first thing we're going to use is a solar res thick formula, glow in the dark. And what we're going to do is pick up all of our body material. Just kind of lay it back here just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly laid out of the way just to, just to kind of get it up. And what we want to do is uh, put this glow in the dark resin all up on these fibers of this hackle and just start to put it into our mouth up here. We don't want to get a lot down in the bottom here. We just want it kind of up on top. So we're going to take this little squeeze tube and this, uh, this solar rest thick is uh, very thick. So we're just going to Couple little drops here, just a touch in here. We don't want a whole lot, just like that. Now you can use your fingers if you want to mix this in. I am not going to use my fingers. I'm actually going to use uh, my bodkin for this, and I'm just going to push that, push that UV resin, that glow resin from Solar Res, right down into those hackle fibers. Make sure it's getting in there nice and well, so that it's kind of, like I said, kind of like rebar and concrete right it's just getting in there and reinforcing the strength it's giving something more to sit against than just the material so this up here towards the horn we're just going to kind of drag this up here okay don't hit it with the light do not okay now we're going to take our material everything except the two black fibers and we're going to pull everything forward i'm going to separate the eyes with my fingers i'm going to work that uv glow resin with my fingers into all these fibers I'm going to kind of twist and pulsate, right? Get all that kind of worked in there. Now that I've got a, a nice looking body, I've got a little bit of gap in here. See this little gap right in here? So I'm going to kind of smush this together with my fingers. And now I'm going to take my UV light, my cure it. And I'm just going to cure this about one to two seconds. It doesn't take very long. Then take the light away. And then take one to two seconds again. Doesn't take very long. And then one more time, one to two seconds. It doesn't take very long. And take the light. Don't leave the light there too long. Um, you can actually uh, cause some uh, the resin to be brittle. You can uh, actually cause discoloration. There's a few other things that you can, you can do to it. So it's only one to two seconds. Then take the light away with this UV, with this uh, solar rest stuff. So as you can see, we kind of got a nice little, um, it's a little harder than, it's, than it was. It's got a little bit of firmness. I can press here. You can kind of see where it's got a little bit of flex. So if I press on the end, it's got a nice little flex to it. Um, now what we're going to do is take just a, a couple dots of that glow in the dark. I'm just going to put it a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here. Just a touch, just a little bit more. And that's all the glow in the dark we're going to use right now. And I'm going to take my bodkin and we're just going to kind of mix it in here. And we're going to come up the towards the head of the shrimp, what's going to be the horn. And we're just going to take our bodkin and we're just going to smear this, for lack of a better word, all up in these fibers. Get it up in there and take your finger if you want to. Move it around. Cure it. Remember, one to two seconds, right? Doesn't take very long. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Take the light away. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Take the light away. And you can kind of see that glowing when I hit it with the light. So one, one thousand, two, one thousand. And then it's, it's done. So right there, it's cured. Now we're going to take... Solar res thick. This is um, this is not the glow in the dark portion or formula. This is just regular uh, UV thick from uh, Solar res, and we're going to start to build the main part of the shell. the The glow in the dark is is done. 
you've got the glow in the dark effect. So we don't want to we don't want to make the whole shell out of glow in the dark because the glow in the dark uh, formula is a little opaque. Uh, it's not it doesn't quite dry crystal clear, and we want a nice crystal clear shell when we're done. So what we're going to do is take some of this UV resin. Um, this UV thick solar res and I like to apply this with a straw I just put a little bit in the container here and I take some on a straw um, because this is so thick I just kind of swirl it around um, put some on a straw what I'm gonna do is put it right here in the middle and I'm gonna draw it towards the back a little bit and then I can kind of paint it with the straw and I'll rotate and I'll paint rotate your vise a little bit if you have a rotary vise if we don't have a rotary vise uh, just take your time and we're just going to kind of paint a little bit here. We're not going to put a big blotch of uh, any resin at any one time. It's just a little bit of resin each time. We're going to build up layers and layers and layers. So I'm going to take just a little bit more about that same amount. Just a little bit here. And I'm going to put it right back in there just like I did. Kind of stream it back and as you can see we're starting to see a little more shell shape than what we had before. You want to make sure you come down to the sides. We don't want it just a big uh, glop going down the top of the shrimp. So we want it to come down the sides as well. So we actually have uh, all sides covered. This is pretty thick formula. Uh, so you've got a pretty good amount of time to work with this. It's not going to run all over the place. I just like to take my time. I like to come in and make sure I've got some resin. Sorry, man, I didn't mean to bump the camera. There. Make sure I got some resin right in there. I don't want to get in the bottom. I don't want the bottom or the mouth of my shrimp to be covered in resin because that deadly dazzle will actually trap a little bit of air bubbles. Um, so as it moves through the water, those trapped air bubbles will release, and it looks uh, like the shrimp is actually moving a little bit more. Or has a lot more movement than what it really does so you can you can kind of trick it in that way so we're just going to build a base of a shell i just kind of want to look at it and make sure that that's you know a pretty good base um you got a little clump somewhere you can take your finger and work it out make sure you have some paper towels again hit it with the light one to two seconds take it away wait about 10 to 15 seconds one two seconds again take it away for a few seconds hit it one more time and then take the light away and now we're going to make just make sure it's where we want. If we have in these little fibers like this one that kind of got out of a little craziness, we're just going to snip it out of the way. I'm going to snip this one out of the way just to get it out there. We don't want a lot of craziness going on right here. Now we're going to take some more thick, just a little bit, about as much as we did the first time there. Kind of spoon it on there, if you will, with the with the straw, a little light up front, more towards the middle, and a little lighter towards the back end, just like a real shrimp would. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take this clip off. So we'll get that out of the way. And we're gonna take our straw, and we're gonna gently kind of give this a little swirl back up towards the front. And what that's gonna do is give us a nice little point of our shell, so the tail of the shrimp actually gets a nice tail shape to it by just rotating your straw and this is why I like to use a straw here because I can rotate that and shape that resin just a little bit better than I can with my fingers or with a brush so I want to get that nice tapered effect and I can do that really well with the straw so I want that there there we go so we're gonna cure that real quick remember one two take it away one, two, take it away. One, two, take it away. So that's about what we want right now. Um, make sure our eyes still move a little bit, right? I still got a nice wiggle there. Um, want to make sure that we've got a nice shape forming. It's not the final shape. We just want to make sure that we have something to to, to, to build our, our base off. So we don't want to build up too much more in the front. We want to build up just a little bit on the back end here so that the weight's sitting here and not here because we don't want it to fall uh, face first. We want it to fall just a little bit. We want it to fall right here um, and it'll fall like this um, because of the weight of because of the way the weight's going to be distributed here. 
So what we want to do right now is take a little bit of the Solares Bone Dry, um, and this is really really thin stuff. Um, it comes in a paintbrush for or with a, in the bottle. So this is just to help a, a couple things actually. This is really thin, so this gets in between any of those little layers that that thick just wasn't quite able to penetrate um, because it was so thick. So we're just going to paint this whole shell, if you will, um, right all the way on the sides. Now this is really thin stuff, so as you start to use this, this may drip down, and you have to be kind of quick with this, whereas the, the thicker stuff, you can kind of take your time, but... If you leave this on its side too much, this will drip onto your vise and anything you have sitting underneath of it. So please just keep that in mind. Now we're just going to cure that real quick. Again, a few seconds. And then take the light away. And now I'm going to count to 10 as I, I cure this. Because I want this to be a nice solid base. So we're going to count to 10. So about 10 seconds, we're just going to move the light up and down. The whole length of this resin. We don't want to keep it in one spot too long. But we only want to do a total of about 10 to 12 seconds here, and then we're just going to take the light away. So that's fully cured right there. There's nothing tacky. There's nothing sticky. Um, it's nice, nice and warm because um, that light just got removed. So um, it's it's not it's not soft. Um, now what we're going to do is take a little bit of our solar res thick. Uh, I got to add some to my. To my container here so give me just a second it it is uh it is thick stuff by all means it is not thin <laughs> come on get out and we're going to finish off our fly with solar rest thick and a couple layers of that solar rest bone dry and that's how we're going to get a nice crystal clear finish is with that solar rest bone dry so we just want to take some solar rest thick and we're going to build up our body of our shrimp and again use a straw and rotate this just a touch so solar is thick I get just a little bit on there I'm just gonna paint this on if you will with this straw make sure it goes down both sides that's a little bit too much actually but I can take that off so I'm just gonna Stroke that up just a little bit, kind of build it up so my sh my sh shrimp shell looks as even as possible. Kind of bring it back towards the tail here. And if you get a little bit like I just did, don't worry about it. You can fix it. Putting your straw and rotating it just like that. There we go. Take your straw and kind of paint it over where it needs to go. This is really thick stuff, so don't be in a hurry. And like I said, if it does that right there, uh, like mine just dripped down into my vise, you have to find a towel of some sort somewhere and make sure that you get it off your vise before you hit it with your UV resin. Because once you hit it, I mean with your UV light, because once you hit it with that torch or that light, it's uh, it's done. It's 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 in there. <laughs> um, so I just want to clean that off real quick. So pardon me, I had a little little mishap with the resin. So I just want to make sure that that's about where I want the, sh the, the shell to look like. I've got just a little touch. I want to put one little spot over here. Uh, I just want just a touch more of the resin. I don't want a whole lot. I want just a little bit right there. Rotate just like that. There we go. Now I can hit it with the light. One, two, take the light away. One, two, take the light away. One, two, take the light away. And now we're going to cure it for about 10 seconds again. So just move that light just a little bit away. It's about three to four inches away. I mean, you don't want it right up here like this, um, but you don't want it too far away either. Um, I take about two to three inches. It just depends. Um, but I just like to move this back and forth, try to get the whole thing cured as much as I can. Uh, shut your light off and take it away. Now, keep in mind, we don't want any of that resin to come down here. We want this nice, natural um, material, but this is just kind of being a pain. So we're just going to go ahead and snip that out of the way. But we want the nice, natural material down here so it traps those air bubbles. Our legs are down here. If you have any of the resin, like this one's got a little bit of a resin on it. So we can just go ahead and 
I'll snip him out of the way. That way he's not messing up anything. So now we've got these two veins, if you remember, hanging out the back here. And you've got one off to the one side of the shrimp, the far side of the shrimp, one on the close side of the shrimp. So what we're going to do is take our solar as bone dry that we um, that we used earlier to to give that nice crystal clear effect, and we're actually going to use the solar as bone dry to not only give it that crystal clear effect, but we're also going to use it to adhere or or uh, weld, however you want to say it, our um, veins, our uh, uh, horns and stuff on the side of the shrimp. So. So I just had to open a new bottle here. So I'm just going to paint this whole thing. And this is just easier for me if I just do this two-handed. So remember, this stuff is really, really thin. So it doesn't take a whole lot. And the thin stuff runs really, really fast. So we're just going to coat this as quick as we can. As quick as we can. And we're just going to paint this. And what this is going to do is make it nice and shiny and clear and uh, by doing this, we're actually making this fly a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger each time. So now that that resin is right where I want it on the side, I'm going to go ahead and cure that. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Take it away. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Take the light away. Do the same thing on this side. Take a little bit of that and paint it. There we go. Paint it everywhere we need it to go. I want just a little bit right there. There we go. See that little, got a little hole right here I want to fill in. It's not really a hole. It's more of a, uh, a lap, a lack of uh, thick that I just didn't quite fill in like I wanted to earlier. So one or two seconds, one or two seconds, and there we go. And then we're going to fully cure it here. Or, uh, what is it? 10 second cure. So right up and straight all the way up and down the, the length of the shrimp here. Okay, take your light off. So, like I said, we're going to use our uh, bone dry to figure out and place our thing. So I'm actually kind of liking that. I just You just kind of lay it down and, and place it with your finger, um, that vein, on one side at a time. Don't try both sides. So I kind of like that. It actually worked out really nice. Um, really nice. It just happened to go right where I wanted it the first try. So I'm just going to paint and I'm going to rotate this just a touch so that resin doesn't dry, doesn't drop too far down. I'm just going to paint that whole length of that vein with the bone dry and we're going to cure it. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing with the other side and I don't think it's going to work as nicely as this side did it just doesn't work that way but all right we're going to take this and we're just going to kind of work this and try to place this wherever we can where it looks good that works really good right there too so we're just going to take this uv solarized bone dry stuff and just paint that so that that's actually putting our vein close to the surface of this of the shrimp shell and actually i got a little bit of a Hump back here, so I'm going to push that down and drag that forward with this hand if I can. Come on, there we go. There we go. There we got it. That's what we want. No, nope, no, nope. it went right back up. I don't know what's going on there. We're going to see if we can. All right, so I'm having a little bit of problem here, so it is what it is. So what we're going to do is cure this one stage at a time. I'm going to cure this back end right there. There we go. Now he's held in place. He's not moving. So now this is what you usually have to do is kind of do it one spot at a time. We'll take our finger, place that where we want it. And then a little bit of a brush, not a whole lot. A couple little drops and just smooth it all over. Hit it with our light. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Wait a few seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. You guys know what it is, right? Okay, so there's our almost finished. We just want to rotate it. We want to make sure that our veins are sticking out here pretty well. We want a little bit of loose. We don't want this resin all the way up in here. We want these a little bit loose up here. You see how these are kind of 
uh, fibers still. They're not a big clump um, because they don't have a lot of resin in them. So we just want to paint this whole thing now with our bone dry. And I'm going to start up top right here underneath the eyes. Okay, just get a couple drops up in there. Just like that, we're going to paint it. Paint it. And paint it, and then we're going to hit it with our UV curing light. One, two, one, two. Take it away for a few seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. And that's all we're going to do on that one. We're going to rotate it towards us and do the other side the same way. So we're going to hit right up underneath that eye. A couple little drops. There we go. Get a nice crystal clear coating on there. I'm going to cure that. One, two, take the light away. One, two, take the light away. And now we're going to do the whole, the whole shell. So we're going to start at the top right up in here and just paint that nice shell. So we get a crystal clear coating with this Solarized bone dry. It adds strength, it adds some durability, and we're just keeping, uh, making sure that everything is coated evenly so it's as smooth as we can get. You can have some bumps and, and things like that. It's not really going to matter too much. So we just want to make sure that we've got a nice crystal clear coating of this. Just kind of paint it on. There we go. Coming to the back. I've got a little bit of a gap there, so I'm going to take a drop of this and just fill in that gap right there. And take a couple more drops and just fill in that gap right there. A couple more drops and fill in that gap. A couple more drops and fill in the gap. So there we go. So that is our last of our UV resins. So we're just going to cure it, take the light away. We're going to cure it, take the light away. Now we're going to count to 10, or 10 to 12 seconds, and we're just going to cure the whole thing up and down. There we go. And there is your UV solar res glow shrimp. Um, so this is the glow shrimp. Uh, like I said, basically uh, kind of derived. Uh, this is the one, excuse me, this is the one that won the Solar Res World Tour Fly Tying Contest this year, 2019. Um, and kind of mess with your legs if you need to. I just try to get those spread out a little bit. Um, so that is the Glow Shrimp. Basically just some very simple materials, uh, very simple tie. It's it's uh, it's all about shaping the 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 um, the shell is what it is. It's That's the biggest part of this. And I'm just going to cure this one more time. I kind of put my oils on that. Uh, so that is the UV Solar Res Glow Shrimp. Uh, basic, it's, it's, it's based off, very loosely, um, off of Bob Popovic's uh, Ultra Shrimp. Uh, it's not an Ultra Shrimp. I don't want you to get confused, but that is what the idea of this fly came from. So thank you, Bob, for the inspiration. And uh, thank you guys for watching.